Hello, everyone, and welcome to Truth Talks. Today, I am going to be talking with my good friend, Vilna Van Beek, and we're going to be discussing the events that happened in Saskatchewan last week. So I'm going to read a couple of uh, excerpts, well, a few excerpts from the local newspapers, the local online newspapers, both in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, and again in Swift Current, and give you a little bit of the... Um, just the journalism and the sense of being, uh, I, I kind of called it a hit piece. So I'm going to read these to you, and then Bill and I are going to discuss a little bit of this and the actual event itself. So in Yorkton, this is what the article said, Pride organizations in Saskatchewan say that Canada's ban on conversion therapy is being tested. And a longer part of that is it's being tested because I was there and Vilna was there and we were going to speak to people about um, the concerns we have about the sex education in our public schools. Anyways, then they go on to say, there, we're not calling it conversion therapy, because we aren't, but we've used a different, uh, different term calling it affirmative therapy. So that's a really interesting uh, perspective because Affirmative therapy is actually now a psychological term and they're calling it um, a misleading because uh, they're saying that people are being misled by false information and that we are stoking people's fears with false information. And then in both of the articles, both in Yorkton and in Swift Current, it says that Gillies, me, has been denounced by the Psychological Association of Alberta as being unaccredited and unlicensed. And that the event undermines the uh, City of Swift Current Safe Places program. So this is really interesting. That Safe Places program was actually developed by a hockey player, young hockey player, uh, Sheldon Kennedy, who had been sexually abused by his male coach. He and several of his... Um, several other boys, hockey playing boys, and that male coach went to uh, prison for it. But what the Pride community is saying that this program that Sheldon developed provides safety for the LGBTQ. Well, that's not what it was developed for. It was developed to provide safety from harms of sexual abuse of young boys uh, in, the, um, in the whole area of hockey. Also in Swift Current, um, they said that they were working with imperfect information. We do not know. These are their words. And it's very interesting, and in my estimation, very poor journalism, because no one contacted me to ask me what I was speaking on. And um, they say this, the specific content of Miss, not Mrs., not even MS, but Miss, Gillies. Well, I've been married for over 30 years, and I kind of do not like uh, that reference. I'm not single. Uh, however, this is the journalism of the day. However, we do know, so they don't know what my speech was about, but we know that we're dealing with somebody who has no issue misrepresenting herself in public. All right. Well, let's bring in Vilna, and let's talk a little bit about some of these things, because this was kind of the atmosphere. So Vilna, um, how are you doing this morning? Well, sorry for laughing right away because <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm doing good, thank you. I uh, uh, am really, uh, I feel honored to be on your show today and hopefully share some, you know, some of our thoughts. We traveled together this week. It was so good to be together. So. Just to answer that question, but uh, what you have just read, wow, I, I, I can just shake my head. Well, um, I was kind of glad they left you alone, Vilna, because I thought, um, you know, they would really target you uh, because, you know, this is your neck of the woods, so to speak, but they left you alone, and I was really glad for that. And well, yeah, it, because... You know, they, they have done this to me before. Uh, they have done a protest against me. And I mean, we can talk about that later. 
but uh, I I was surprised that my name didn't come up in the in the paper, and I thought, oh, this time at least I'm not guilty or something. <laughs> or <laughs> you were the, you were the one that they were tar uh, targeting, and of course frustrated. I was frustrated to to hear and to read all the accusations, you know, uh, and false um, things that they posted uh, against you. And, you know, that was really hard for me to read and uh, to 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 um, see that and uh, that is in a paper for people to read, you know. Well, and I think we need to clarify or I need to clarify here. Um, many of those comments were made by um, the president of the Pride organization, I think, in Swift Current or there was another one in Yorkton. So there were a couple individuals who are very involved in the pride um, community that made these uh, these scandalous statements. I mean, they're absolutely wrong. They're lies. And I that's maybe strong. I would say that, well, they are lies, but the reality is that these people need to do their homework before they, they start um, putting these kind of comments in a journal, uh, in an article. Like, and not only did the pride individuals um, not do their homework, but the journalists didn't do their homework because I have not been denounced. I am not unaccredited. I am not unlicensed. Uh, apparently the uh, Psychological Association of Alberta um, had some information about me, but it was erroneous. And that's really, that's really on the Psychological Association so that'll be an interesting thing where I take that because I am and have been licensed for over 20 years with the American Association of Marriage and Family Therapists. So what they are doing is very defamatory, both with the APA, or not the APA, but the um, Psychological Association of Alberta, but also the uh, Pride community and the journalists. Like somewhere this has to stop and what they call false information is what we are providing the, the public. And it is true and it's verifiable research and they don't like it. That's the bottom line. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is what they did to me, like I said, 10 years ago, without having a conversation with me, they went to my website and didn't like what they read there because I have chosen to you know walk away from a lesbian lifestyle and show celibacy they didn't like that so they disagreed with that so what did they do right away without having conversation with me they uh, just blasted me i got emails i'm a i'm a hater i'm a homophobe and of course i received death threats in the in the by via email because they make this uninformed decisions because they chose not to have a conversation with the source like if if the if the if the persons in in yorkton as well as swift current uh you know uh, if they would have had a a, a, a honest open respectful conversation with you to find yes. out exactly well what is this about what is the march the million march for kids what is this truly about uh can we focus on our children who we are trying to protect but no all they did they won't listen they just make all these accusations and send out false information and then of course the media just blows it up in out of proportion and it frustrates me that they are kind of one-sided you know and and uh, didn't say anything you know basically to protect you so the, the we have a we have a problem you know we do have a problem and you know one thing i wanted to add is that um the organizers in swift current actually sent an email to um i think his name's sean Hanna who had uh, made all of these accusations, false accusations against us. And they uh, wanted to arrange a meeting. It took him several days to answer. And they did actually, I think the day before the event was to take place, they had a meeting with this man. Interestingly enough, 
because I mean, he's all up in arms. This is conversion therapy and all. It isn't at all what we're talking about, but you can read into whatever you want to, right? So anyways, um, the organizers went and met with him and his father. So they talked to him and and they did a really good job because they said to him, do you understand what is happening in our public education with the youngest of children right through, you know, the whole public education world? And they began to explain what we were trying to do in educating people with what's going on in the school system. And, and he admitted, both him and his dad admitted to the organizers, we didn't have a clue. They didn't know. And at that point, their guard dropped. Now, I would love to see this, this young man write an apology and put it in the paper. Because that's the next step. When you do something, when you slander someone, uh, there needs to be some kind of recompense. Now, I have already, now it's cost me a little bit because um, I immediately decided that I wasn't going to let this one go. And so uh, I had a lawyer then draft a letter to both Sean and the other, um, it was a woman in uh, Yorkton. So they both got a letter from my lawyer, a cease and desist letter. Anyways, um, I haven't heard anything more from them, but it's it's been pretty quiet. The other thing, and I don't know if you've seen this, Vilna, because I haven't, there has been nothing from the journalist that was at the actual event in Swift Current. He videotaped the entire thing, but I have yet to see anything written. So what, yeah, uh, very interesting. What is this about? You know, I... I have been looking uh, online. Uh, actually, I haven't been uh, yesterday, but I, I have gone online to see, you know, if anything has been written about the event and Swift Current and absolutely nothing. So this to me just speaks volumes again. It's like on whose side are they? And of course, yes, there was a, a journalist in the room. He was actually standing right across me on the on the uh in the back of the of the of the building he was standing the whole time and uh, several times during my talk i looked at him in his eyes when i made some pretty serious statements you know and what we are for and why are we doing what we are doing um he was making notes the whole time and he had his camera going the whole time which is like is it videotaping what is he doing but uh yeah yeah not not a word in the newspaper and that is really disappointing to me because has he heard the truth and now is he not willing to share the truth uh on on what he has heard because he heard it out of both of our mouths uh one statement after the other is we are here because we want to protect our innocent children from being sexualized in public schools. This is this was the message. And so why are they not saying anything about it? This is pretty alarming. Well, so I'm I have to confess um, because at the end of the night, uh, just after I spoke, I, you know, and he was kind of finished videotaping and everything. I prayed <laughs> and I just asked God that he would not be allowed to uh, write lies. And so maybe that's why there's nothing there, Bill. Not, because honestly, I, you're absolutely right. The media is so extremely biased. And quite honestly, I don't know how anyone coming to that event and they, my speech will be on Spotify. I have yours uh, from the other, from Yorkton, a really good video, Vilna, that I'm going to put up on my website as well. It might already be there. So people know what, what we're talking about. But um, the reality is you couldn't sit in that room and not be compelled to protect children and and you know, not have your eyes open. You know, I know that there were a couple teachers, one teacher was a little offended. And this, this is um, because we're, we're, we're challenging their sacred cows a little bit. 
and that is the education system. And so never, needless to say, teachers sometimes feel that's a direct assault against them. And it's not. We're, there's lots of good teachers, but the actual hierarchy, the hierarchy of the education system is corrupt. And I, I think, you know, uh, when, uh, so a person came to me afterwards and said that we were too harsh towards teachers. But I mean, during my presentations and during your presentations, we have both said it several times that we know there are wonderful teachers out there that are doing uh, their best and, and have the best interest of young children, you know, in front of them. But the reality is what, what this person was challenging me and said that under our premier here in Saskatchewan, this indoctrination and this teaching is not taking place. Well, that is not true because That's I have right. two examples. One is uh, on on after I dropped you off, at the airport uh, on Thursday, as you were flying back to, to your your home, um, I had a phone call from a, a person who attended uh, uh, one of our events. And I, I, I just to protect her privacy, I won't say which event. But anyway, uh, she said she went to her principal and wanted to know about the sex education Please, in the in, in that yeah. specific yeah. school. And then the, uh, the teacher actually, uh, the principal affirmed that, yes, we do these classes in the school, but you as a mom can now decide if you want to remove your child from these classes. These of classes. course, the, the mom said, of the course, piece. I am going to do this, but we know that... Uh, the, 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 the kids is going to bully this child again. And, uh, but then he said this to the mom is that, but we have sex ed classes and children over the, uh, the grade eight or something, they, they get, they have to go to all these classes. And of course, my opinion about all of this is this has to be removed completely. This was the one conversation this happened. This, so this is happening in a school not very far from where i live the second uh, affirm, uh, aff uh, affirmation that this is taking place is i i i had a conversation with uh, a friend of mine about two two weeks ago talking about a million marks for kids and then she Please said me, her see. friend is a librarian in a school Please. not very far from me and the librarian friend complained to her about materials that have been showing up and that she is forced to place in the library the school library for our young children to watch and to look at and so it affirms again it is in our schools and as I've said it explicitly, either you remove your child from public school now or you get together with other parents and put tremendous pressure on school boards and ask for these material to be removed because we see what it's doing to our children. It's no secret. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. And, you know, one thing about the sex ed curriculum, um, certainly there are sex ed classes but the actual curriculum is meant to be embedded into every single class. So, you know, the affirming of uh, homosexuality, the affirming of bisexuality, the affirming of, of transsexual and transgender, that that is, and how they do that is, you know, math class, uh, two plus two, um, you know, and they'll say, you know, maybe a bisexual fan or something. You know, I, I mean, this sounds really ludicrous, but there have, have been indications that it's embedded into every class in one way or another. And that's, that's kind of ridiculous in my sense, and I'm sure it's not in every school. You know something, Vilna, when you're talking, I want to remind listeners that Vilna lives in a very rural area of Saskatchewan. We're not talking about you know, a thousand children at a school here, um, you know, in elementary school or between, between grade, kindergarten and grade nine. We're talking about smaller schools or central schools, but 
It's not like we're in the midst of big cities. These things are being really promoted in the very rural areas. And, and that's shocking to many people because they think because they live in rural Canada that this can't happen in their rural schools. And I want to say absolutely it can. It's mandated right across every province. And it comes down from um, the W uh, the United Nations sex education uh, curriculum. And it's very, very, uh, what would I say, their curriculum is, is definitely about the sexualization of children from junior kindergarten on. So it's, um, it's a threat to every child in every school system. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you remember what I said in uh, uh, what it's doing to our children. I used the example of, uh, you know, something uh, uh, South African saying, because that's where I was uh, born and where I raised in South Africa. We have a saying, and I'll say it in Afrikaans, vroeg rijp, vroeg vrot. It means early early uh, ripe, early rot. And I used the example where I said, uh, in the springtime, way back in South Africa, when the peaches were supposed to ripen, uh, we would go into the orchard and we would touch every peach because we wanted a ripe peach. And then as we put pressure on these peaches, it actually caused a damage to them. And then the peach would rot instead of ripening naturally. And this is, this is uh, uh, my... A, a, a strong stance against uh, s uh, sex education, uh, which should start at home at the at the age, at the appropriate age. This is not something that should be done in schools to start with, because we now put pressure on young people who are not ready for this conversation and we are not only confusing them but we are misleading them into really falling down the cliff and e uh, uh, early ripe early rot and so this was kind of the example that i used when i was talking so it's a great metaphor Vilna. it's a great metaphor because it really does encompass the whole idea of early childhood sexualization and early childhood sexualization pushes children. Usually that happened, you know, in decades past, that happened because a child was sexually abused as a very young, you know, usually uh, even before school age and um, or, you know, before the age of, you know, 13 or 14. So then the child is sexualized from that young age and they are already then predisposed to more experiences um predisposed well i'll just say it they're predisposed to accepting pedophilic um advances and we are now i just think we're on the on the cliff of a huge um i just think a huge explosion of child rape and that is really scary really really scary because we know that children who have been sexually abused, uh, especially chronically sexually abused in their childhood, are predisposed to all kinds of other behaviors and that their self-esteem is so wounded and damaged that they go looking for love in, in any place they can find it. And sometimes in that desperation, they find themselves entrenched in very, very harmful practices. So, Vilna, um, do you have any kind of last comments for this section? We're actually going to do another um, filming and talk uh, more specifically about you, Vilna, and about your experiences, because they're very, very important to this whole conversation. Well, um, I, uh, I am just uh, so grateful for uh, the rising up of of many parents at this time you know both you and uh, uh and that we have been we have been praying we have been we have been uh warning yeah. we have been uh, trying to equip uh, our societies on on this for a, a very long time and it has felt that it's kind of falling on deaf ears but what we are seeing i'm so grateful for for uh, yeah. uh 
I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, the, the, the Muslim father. Um, oh, yes, Kamel, Kamel El Sheikh. Yep. Yep. This father who stood up, uh, he's a true shepherd of his flock. And you know, for listeners that don't know, I'm a physical shepherd, I have sheep. And this father has stood up and is taking um, his place as a shepherd and says, I will train my children, I will equip my children, and I am going to protect my children uh, against um, the onslaught that is coming. I am so grateful for, uh, for his standing up. And now we He's see standing. a rising up. Uh, of many, many parents in this nation, Canada. And uh, I want to say to the listeners, even today, this was just the beginning. And, uh, you know, and we are not going to stop. And there's a war going on. And yeah, the war didn't start by the parents. It start, it The war started by the activists who, who don't agree with what we are standing for. And it's to, to protecting the kids. But uh, I am just grateful for every parent that has stood up and say, not under my watch. So, so grateful for them. And that's, uh, uh, yeah, I just want to maybe add a couple things there that I know you'll agree with, uh, Vilna, is that I was really, really pleasantly surprised at both venues, both in Yorkton and in Swift Current, at the number of people, uh, parents and grandparents that came out I think there were about 200 in York, um, no, yes, about 200 in Yorkton, and it's not a big community, and about 120 in um, Swift Current. Uh, but one thing we should just mention and uh, is that in Swift Current, the activists came out, and we didn't uh, talk about that, but they came out, and initially they blocked the doors into the, into the venue where we were, we had to, some of our guys had to go out and, and say, please, could you move out of the way? Because you can't obstruct um, the entranceway. And they did, um, but they still continued to intimidate people. They moved to either side of the doors, but they were chanting, they were loud. And they when they would walk um, kind of at the outside, you know, on the sidewalk between the two um you know, the two lanes, so to speak, and people had to still navigate their way in. So it was quite intimidating. There were a lot of people that just drove by that didn't come in. So the fact that we had 120 uh, parents and grandparents that came in as some teachers and uh, other people, it was, it was good. And I think it was an exceptional experience. So, so that's uh, our take on it. And, you know, the activists, we invited them, right, Vilna? We invited them to come in. Yeah, and they chose yep, not to. Yep. They uh, like the uh, some of the activists back in Yorkton. They said even with the march uh, on the twentieth of September, they did not attend or do a counter protest because they said we don't want to be in the presence of people who hate. <laughs> it was like you ha you had no idea, and I encourage people to listen to my talk. Uh, from the Million March, uh, if you type in uh, um, count your sheep daily and know the status of your flock, uh, if you type that in into YouTube, that was my speech on the on the day of the march. Um, yeah, so uh, and they have accused us of being haters. So and even the talk on uh, uh, on the Tuesday evening when we were in uh, Yorkton. I would encourage you, uh, and you said that you, ha you have a tape and you have posted it. Yes. I would encourage people to listen to it. And uh, I don't think there's any hate coming from anything that, that I said. In fact, I got so emotional that night, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I often tell people I never know when I will get emotional but caring so deeply about our young children who are being indoctrinated and we need to protect them. So anyway, I can go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for being with us uh, today, Vilna. I really, really appreciate that. And we're going to talk again and um, we're going to talk about your story because it's a very powerful one. <laughs> 
Thank you for tuning in today for my conversation with Vilna Van Beek. I encourage you to go to her website, godgazers.com, and even purchase her book, When, God, when Gay Comes Home. Uh, she's a wonderful lady, and uh, thank you again for watching. I, I encourage you again to check her out, and have a blessed day. You've been listening to Truth Talks with Dr. Rian. Thank you so much for joining us today. You can find Anne's books, blog, and sign up for the newsletter by going to restoringthemosaic.ca.